Brock by next summer. Senior administration officials say that President Bush is expected to announce a cut in the troop levels in Iraq when he addresses the nation tomorrow night. This is based on General David Petraeus' recommendation. The reduction would put U.S. troops back at their pre-surge level of about 130,000. Well, General Petraeus and U.S. Ambassador Ryan Crocker are going to talk about Iraq at a news conference in about an hour. Petraeus recommended the 30,000 troop cut to the lawmakers this week, but he says it would be premature to plan further troop reductions beyond next summer. Get this. Russia is claiming that it successfully tested the world's most powerful non-nuclear air-delivered bomb. Russian TV aired that video of it yesterday. It's nicknamed the dad of all bombs, and Russia is saying it's four times more powerful than the U.S.'s mother of all bombs. What is this, an escalation, some people ask. All right, an admitted killer who escaped from a New Jersey psychiatric hospital Sunday is back in custody. Police say they found him behind the hospital dressed in camouflage. They say he had apparently stayed in the area and came back on his own. The U.S. has thousands of armored vehicles in Iraq. Now they have one purpose, to keep U.S. troops safe. Richard has more now at the update desk on the latest technologies. Good morning. Good morning to you. There's a technology, something so simple as an arm to keep them further away from these IEDs. And so. they can't get enough of them, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Sure. Appreciate it. Hey, by the way, um, all of this video that Richard is showing us, you can find more of these types of reports from him at CNN.com slash Robin. Convicted killer Mary Winkler will be allowed to be on the Oprah show, just not in the United States, speaks a language other than English at home. Surprise ya? Well, a 2006 survey by the Senate can add some nice flavor to a meal unless it's pressed with somebody's feet. Health department officials. Oh, man. Hey, maybe he thought he was making wine. You know, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, is Bob going to have something to say about this? <laughs> Let's talk about what's going on in your backyard today or at the bus stop forecast. Here is meteorologist Bob Van Dillon. Yeah. Missed you. Yeah, I missed you too. Military salute at this time, and today's no exception. But we've changed it up now. We've decided we'll let other people say how they want to salute the military. We give you country singer Pat Green. Turn your little camera on yourself. Salute maybe somebody that you know, you can hold their picture. Heck, even if you don't have anybody in your family in the military, still yet, you can salute the troops. Say what you want, say 15 or 20 seconds long, and then go to CNN.com slash Robin. You click on the Vmail link, and it'll set you up so you can send that video our way, and we can show you on TV. You'll finally be part of the company. <laughs> of Robin and Company. All right, an update on the breaking a huge, huge earthquake in Indonesia. Now there is a tsunami watch for the Pacific. We'll get you updated details coming up. Former radio host Don Imus, football player, won't be suing former radio host Don Imus. Now, Kiavon withdrew her lawsuit against Imus, CBS Radio, and other media outlets yesterday. She had... If you have a Facebook profile, the whole world is about to see it. Jennifer Westhoven, why are we getting our 15 moments of fame? Oh, What's going on? Facebook says, on. Facebook says they want everybody who's not in Facebook to get a taste of it, to be able to see who's on it, maybe they'll want to join it. I spoke then the more that they wanted to attract. Yeah, and if people might quit, and also if they're going to show all this stuff, it seems like in this day of internet ID theft, that's very scary. All right. was that you could go to the Caribbean and Mexico without it because they were so backlogged. Um, so now it's back to normal? Well, you've got to now they're, they're going to be on schedule to go back to the rule where they want you to eventually have a passport for this. Gotcha. All right. So not yet. Not yet. But coming. Yeah. Okay. The cops usually use cameras to capture criminals on tape, but you just have to learn he wakes up and watches uh, the show and has for a while. And so we got access to him, got that interview. And to see more um, of our behind-the-scenes interview with Kenny Chesney, all you got to do is go to CNN.com slash Rob, and we touch on a number of different subjects. Can you believe it? I can't imagine it? No. No, thank you. A loose gator is caught. All good, right? Not so much for the police who did it. Why is coming up? We're waiting right now to get in some video that we're expecting from the area. And, of course, we'll turn it around and bring it right to you. Some Florida police officers are in trouble for tying up an eight-foot alligator and then releasing it into a lake. Sounds like they did a good job. Well, here's the deal. They're supposed to call in a trapper when the gator is bigger than four feet. Well, people in a nearby apartment called the police when they found the gator trying to climb up their stairs. I got it was denied. 
A video appears to show a police officer threatening to fabricate charges against a man. As Matt Sesney of Affiliate KMOV reports, the man recorded the confrontation with his in-car camera. Yeah, very displeased. Again, that was Matt Sesney of Affiliate KMOV reporting. The officer is on unpaid leave pending an investigation. New technology. What's that? <laughs> you know what? I apologize because our producers are talking to me and I don't know what they said. I think it's break time. See you. It's 8.30 Eastern, of course. This is CNN Headline News. Morning sunshine. I'm Robin Mead. It's busy this morning. Let me tell you what we're going to be talking about in this half hour. Right. Now, we have a breaking story that we're watching today. I'm going to start with that. There is a tsunami watch right now in effect for areas in Indonesia after a powerful earthquake hit. It's been about an hour ago that earthquake hit. So we're watching from the Indonesia area to see if they're going to get a tsunami or no. The 7.9 magnitude quake struck near the southern part of that country. And uh, Andy Sapchura is a producer for CNN. He's in Jakarta. Here's what he describes he felt. And that caused the giant tsunami off of the northern tip of Indonesia in 2004. So a small change in those numbers is actually a huge change in strength. It does not mean we're in the clear yet. Uh, Bob, can you help me explain yes. how that, how you go up one notch when yeah. it comes to the magnitude of an earthquake. It's not a linear scale. Yeah, I was talking about from the USGS said, you know, the earthquake itself is a warning that there could be a tsunami, and so people need to get off the beaches. So that's why we're keeping a really close eye on this story, and we'll keep going back and forth and give you updates, especially when we get new tape like we just did. All right, up to 30,000 U.S. troops could be coming home from Iraq by next summer. Senior administration rescue team search for millionaire Steve, uh, millionaire adventurer Steve Fawcett. Some experts doubt that he could reduce troop deaths in Iraq. Here's Richard Louis at the update desk now with more about this vehicle that somehow pushes the force away of explosions away from the people inside the vehicle. How does it do that? You know, Robin, which is uh, thick, they're based on what is a, a Mack truck chassis. Uh, and you could, it's so cold in there, actually. When we were driving that in that picture you saw there, you can actually freeze popsicles in there. It's so cold. Built for safety, but also apparently built for comfort. Yes, absolutely. 140 right. degrees out there in that theater. I wonder how much those cost. And they run around 400000 now. They used to be around six. Richard, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Hey, I wanted to tell you that these um, stories that Richard had just a little bit more torque, and there could be something brewing in the Gulf. And let's talk right now to meteorologist Bob Van Dillon. For the moment, though, he's just got his eye on it. Looks like mm -hmm. a rainmaker, right? Yeah, torque. Huh? Yep.